Hey boys, it's Harm Nan. Today, we're going to be going over my picks for the 10 best ways to make money as a solo player in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now that we have a new business into the game due to the Chop Shop DLC being released, I felt like my last list was a little bit outdated and I wanted to make a quick update for you guys and I've also been getting a lot of requests to make an updated version of my last video. So here we are. Now before we get into this guys, if we could hit 30,000 likes on this video, that would be absolutely insane. I know we're not going to do it on day one, but over the coming weeks, if we could get this to 30k, that would be absolutely amazing. And last thing, before we get into the video, I am trying to hit 200,000 subs before the end of the year. So if you want to help me out with that, consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and check out my other content to make sure that you actually like what I'm doing before you subscribe. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the 10th best way to make money as a solo player in Grand Theft Auto Online currently. And starting off at number 10, we have the hangar. Now the hangar business has had some pretty big and pretty significant changes to it over the last year and really the last couple of years, taking it from being one of the worst businesses in the game, in my opinion, the worst business in the game, to one that's actually somewhat worth doing. It has made the list, so clearly there is something to do with it that is good. With the Los Angeles Mercenaries DLC, there's been some more changes to make it a little bit better than it was previously. Now you can operate the business as a ground-based business instead of only using air vehicles, which is pretty cool. They've also added Rooster into the hangar who can passively source cargo for you, similar to how they work in the CEO cargo warehouses. Although the one in the hangar is not nearly as good because he's going to source a random type of cargo. And obviously if you're trying to max out on 50 crates of one type of cargo, which gives you the most money, this isn't super ideal because he's going to pull up with some random sh** so you don't really know what he's going to do. Now they've also tripled the value of air freight cargo crates making them worth $30,000 a piece instead of just $10,000 and if you sell in bulk with just one type of cargo you get a huge sale bonus. Now the sale missions still are pretty terrible overall but I guess they could maybe be worse sort of but they're, they're not that fun overall so the sale missions still suck although the business can make you a lot more money than it could previously so that's a w in my books and it got it onto the list although it has moved down a slot since last time so that's pretty much it for the hangar it's number 10 let's talk about number nine all right guys for the next best way to make money as a solo we have the mc businesses now these are not super solo friendly however they are doable as a solo player and they have gotten better over time they've also gotten a 25 percent money bonus on the sale missions with the release of expanded and enhanced which was about two years ago so They've been a little bit better for quite a while now. They've also had some new sale missions given to them. Occasionally, you will only get a one vehicle sale on every single business. Now, of course, you still run the risk of having to deliver with delivery vans, which obviously everyone knows is like the absolute worst thing ever. And same with float planes, you still are going to get those missions. You're just not going to get them as often as you would have before. With that being said, they're still too often, but you just kind of have to deal with it as unfortunate as it is. Now with the MC businesses, there are several different ones. And the best one is, of course, the lockup, followed by the lab, then counterfeit cash, then the weed farm, and then there's document forgery, which is like the, it's, it's like the cousin you don't really acknowledge when they come over to a family gathering, if you know what I'm saying. It's just like, you just kind of ignore them. They're that one relative, you know, you just, you, yeah, you don't talk about it. It's really not worth doing the document forgery business. It has had a buff recently, but I can't even find any information on it because nobody even cares about the document forgery. It sucks. So yeah, the document forgery sucks. If you're going to buy MC businesses, I would really focus on getting the lockup, the lab and counterfeit cash. Those are really the only three that you need. The weed farm is profitable. You can make money with it. And it's another business to have, plus it looks really, really cool inside, honestly. But beyond that, it's not super worth owning, to be completely honest. Now, the real reason you're owning these businesses, though, is so that you can source the goods passively in the nightclub basement. Now, you can still make good money by running the businesses themselves and using them in the basement as well. But a lot of people just choose to buy the businesses and then just use them for the basement. But you can, of course, double dip and make money off of the actual business itself and then also through the nightclub basement. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later. But yeah, the MC business is definitely the ninth best way to make money as a solo player in GTA Online heading into 2024. Now, next up at number eight, we have CEO Cargo. Now, this requires you to own a CEO office before you can get started. And it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time 
but the reward that you're gonna get for running this business is pretty worth it overall, I would say. And with the release of the Criminal Enterprises DLC, Rockstar made it so that you can passively source crates in warehouses now by visiting each of the staff inside of each of the warehouses, paying them 7,500 bucks, and they will source between one and three crates. And they also have a 1% chance of sourcing a special item, which will be worth about 100 to maybe $130,000. So that is pretty nice. Now, unfortunately, also with the Criminal Enterprises DLC, Rockstar added some terrible sourcing missions. And there's this one that takes half an hour to complete, and it's just not worth doing. You might as well leave the session and take the 18 grand loss because it is just simply not worth doing. I personally just use CEO Cargo by going to the warehouses and passively sourcing and just doing this over and over again. You can do this once every 48 minutes and that's kind of the way that I like to run it. I feel like that's the absolute best way to do it. Now the sale missions for this business are pretty easy actually. You get one to four vehicles no matter what and depending on how full your warehouses are, that will change of course. If they're really full, you're gonna get three or four. If they're you know pretty lightly filled, you're gonna get one or two and you get 30 minutes for the sale mission, so they're pretty easy to do overall, except for if you get that Valkyrie on the airdrop missions. F the Valkyrie on the airdrop missions. F that guy, he's a piece of shit. Anyways, that's it for CEO Cargo. Definitely the eighth best way to make money is a solo in GTA Online heading into 2024. Next up, we have the Auto Shop at number seven. Now the auto shop has several different ways to make money included in the purchase of the business. You can customize customer vehicles that will show up randomly in your auto shop, uh, make the cars look how the customer wants them to, which is usually horrible. And then you can deliver them or you can use your staff members to deliver them as well and they will do it passively and then you'll get the money a little bit later. Now they have buffed the staff members so they don't crash the cars nearly as much. They've become competent drivers. They will actually pay you a decent amount of money now, although the staff does cost a lot to get in the first place. I personally just deliver them myself but you can do what you want. Now you can also do auto shop contracts, which are mini heists and they pay between, I'd say 150 to $300,000. And depending on the contract, when they go on double money or triple money, they can be really, really good. Now you also get access to the exotic exports list, which are cars marked by little blue dots that will pop up on your minimap. And you can deliver these to the docks for $20,000. Now, of course, the worst part of the whole business is Sasanta and particularly KDJ. But if you take your headphones off, cover your eyes with duct tape and just wait five minutes, you'll get through it just fine. And next up at number six, the salvage yard. Now this is gonna trigger a lot of people, especially guys that really like the auto shop. But the salvage yard is actually a very good business in GTA Online, and I think it is getting heavily underrated by the community. Now this was added into GTA Online with the Chop Shop DLC just about a week ago. About a week ago. And included with this business, there are three main ways of making money, two of them being directly linked to each other. So first of all, we have the robberies, which are the biggest attraction of this business, I would say although they're not the best part of this business. They are definitely the one that everybody's paying attention to, but it's not what the point of the business is. Now these robberies are basically mini heists similar to the auto shop heists, except with more setups and a little bit more pay generally. They might be more, they might be less, but they do take a little bit more time, which is very unfortunate. Overall, they're pretty easy to do actually. And what you're gonna be doing is basically setting up a mini heist, like I said, and going to steal a vehicle. Then you're gonna deliver it back to the salvage yard and then you have the chance to sell, salvage, or allegedly keep it for yourself. Although keeping it for yourself is a drip feed item. So we haven't actually got that in the game yet and we don't exactly know how it's going to work, but it is allegedly a thing that is gonna be happening with this business. So potentially you can do missions where you're gonna be able to steal a supercar that's worth you know several million dollars and just keep it for yourself if you choose to, which sounds interesting, but of course this is drip feed, so we're gonna to have to wait for it. Now the second and third ways to make money with this business are linked and they involve the optional tow truck upgrade for the business that you can put on when you are buying the business. And of course, if you missed it, you can renovate the business and buy the tow truck. Now there's two tow trucks, you can get the clean one and you can get the beater. Apparently there's no difference. I had heard that there was a speed difference between the two and I still do believe there is a speed difference between the beater tow truck and the brand new tow truck, although I could totally be wrong. So take that with a grain of salt. Now what you're gonna do is enter the tow truck once you bought it in your salvage yard, you're gonna go out and you're gonna do basically repo missions. You're gonna get a vehicle location where you're gonna drive to with the tow truck. You're gonna pick up the vehicle and bring it back to the salvage yard. 
Now once you've delivered it to the salvage yard, your workers are going to begin dismantling the vehicle, and after 48 minutes you'll get paid for the salvage value of the vehicle. However, that is if you have the staff member. Now if you do not have the staff member upgrade, this will take double the amount of time, 96 minutes to complete, before you actually get paid. Now this money will be deposited directly into your bank account and after you've delivered a car you can actually get off the game and the next time you come on you will get the money that that vehicle brought in. So it's pretty cool. Your salvage yard also has two slots so you can do two of these and then wait out the 48 minutes or whatever it is and then go and do another one and another one and another one. Depending on how many vehicles that you've brought back to the salvage yard and that are being salvaged you will also make more money through your daily safe income because this business has a safe that does fill up with money. Now there is an option to upgrade this safe when you are renovating the business and by default it is $100,000 that it can hold and if you upgrade the wall safe for 750 grand, it can hold 250,000. So it is significantly better, but if you check it regularly, you probably won't need it. I would recommend it because mine fills up pretty darn quick, I have to say. So keep that in mind and think about what you actually want to do. Now, depending on how many vehicles you've delivered back to the salvage yard, you will get more and more money per day, maxing out at $24,000 a day, which is not bad. And in fact, it's actually the second most profitable wall safe in the entire game right now. And if you factor in the money that you're going to get from salvaging the vehicles as well as what you're going to get in the wall safe this business really starts to make some money and if you consider that in comparison to the robberies you're going to make way more by doing the tow truck stuff than by actually doing the robberies so keep that in mind don't charge the salvage yard too hard until you've actually tried it yourself and put in some time with it it is actually a very good business at least in my opinion next up at number five we have the bunker now the bunker will take you a pretty good amount of money to actually get started with it but once you get it going it is actually going to be a pretty awesome business to own. Now the strategy to use the bunker as a solo player is to firstly buy it and buy all the upgrades. Now as far as the location goes for which one you should buy I would say a hundred percent you should buy the farmhouse bunker. Save up the money it is going to be worth it. Of course the secondary best option is the Chumash bunker which is on the far left side of the map but trust me, it is slower to get your deliveries done and it is way, way worse. People will tell you in the comments that, oh, the farmhouse isn't that much better. Da, da, da. They're Chumash Tards. We need to refer to them as Chumash Tards. Once you see the light that the farmhouse is better, you can never unsee the light. Trust me, if you have a Chumash bunker, you should switch to the farmhouse. It is so much better. I did that. So worth it. Anyways, that's besides the point. How you run this business as a solo player is very, very simple. You're gonna fully upgrade the business, then you are going to start buying supplies. Now these are gonna cost you $75,000 for a full refill, and off of that 75K, you will make $210,000 worth of product. So you're making $135,000 in profit. You're then gonna resupply it again, and wait for that to fill up. Now this will get you up to $420,000, and you will have spent $150,000 on those supplies. Once those two resupplies have fully made into product, you're gonna hit the sale. You're gonna do it, you're gonna deliver the two vehicles, maybe one vehicle if you're lucky, and you're gonna make 420,000. It's pretty good. Now also there's bunker research and everything like that, but honestly stay away from bunker research. It's not really worth it. You get some upgrades for your weapons, but it's gonna cost you a ton of money to do, and you're gonna sacrifice profit which we, we cannot sacrifice profit. Profit is the number one thing. So that's pretty much it for the bunker. It's definitely the fifth best business in the game. Let's talk about number four. All right, and number four, we have the Acid Lab. Now the Acid Lab is a business that you can get for pretty much free once you complete the initial six last dose missions from the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC that released last December. Now, once you've completed these first six missions, you will get a Brigade 6x6 and deliver it to the Freak Shop, where you will then get to purchase it for $750,000. Now, the money that you make from doing those first six missions will almost pay for your Acid Lab, and then you're gonna need to complete 10 DAX Fooligan missions. Now, you get these by calling DAX and requesting work. Once you've done this, you can purchase the equipment upgrade for $250,000. So this business is gonna run you $1 million to get started. Now with the equipment upgrade, the Acid Lab actually becomes profitable. So you need the equipment upgrade if you're planning to run this thing. If you're planning to do this business, do not do it without the equipment upgrade, trust me. Now what you're gonna to do to run this is pay $60,000 to get a full bar of resupply. Those supplies are gonna get made into 
half of your product bar, or just over half of your product bar. You're gonna resupply it again, and after four hours, it will be completely full. Now you can also use the boost that you get access to once per day, and this will boost your acid production by twice as fast for half an hour. So this will get your production time down to three and a half hours, which will be pretty good. Now the payout is $335,000 for doing a full sale. Now this is not bad considering the supply cost is a lot lower than some of the other businesses. And you will also always get a single vehicle sale mission with this business and it will always be the delivery bike, which is very nice. Now you can also name your acid product through the interaction menu and this will give you a 5% bonus on your sale, which is pretty good, making it around $351,000 for a full sale in about four hours while only costing you about $80,000, $90,000. So pretty good business. It is mobile as well. The acid lab itself is one of the most armored vehicles in the game. What's not to like about this business? That's it for the Acid Lab at number four. Let's talk about number three. At number three, we have the Agency. The Agency is one of the best businesses in GTA Online. It has three ways of earning money. The first being the contract heist, and this involves Dr. Dre. You can bang this out in about an hour to an hour and a half, and it'll pay you a million bucks. It also has no cooldown, so you can run it back over and over again. Honestly, pretty good way to make money arguably just as good as Ko Perico now with all the nerfs that Ko Perico has gotten, but it is a little bit worse because it just will take you that little extra amount of time. Now you can also do security contracts with the agency, which will pay you an upfront sum of money once you've completed a mission. And this ranges from about $30,000 to I would say $80,000. And the best missions to do are gang termination, rescue operation, and recover valuables. Those are easily the three best to do. The rest are kind of long and miserable. The next best is probably liquidized assets, but it's just a little bit longer than the other ones and overall not really super worth doing. Now also, as you complete more and more security contracts, your daily safe income will also increase, which is pretty good as well. So for every 10 contracts that you've completed, your daily safe income will go up by $1,000, maxing out at 201 contracts completed, and you will get $20,000 every in-game day or every 48 minutes of real time, deposited into your safe without you having to do anything. And keep in mind, you're actually gonna get paid for completing every single one of those missions as well, which is pretty insane. Now, of course, the agency also does grant you access to payphone hits, which will pay you $85,000 upon completion, so long as you do exactly what they ask you to. These do take a little bit longer and Overall, I would say they are worth it. You can also skip the cooldown by switching sessions, so you can run these back to back, and you call Franklin to request a payphone hit if you guys are interested. That's it for the agency, easily top three business in the game. It is super good, and the amount of different ways to make money that it offers is absolutely incredible. It's definitely one that I would recommend picking up for sure. Now, of course, as usual, at number two, we have the nightclub. This business is completely passive, and you always get a single sale vehicle with it. Now upstairs in the nightclub, as long as the popularity is full or nearly full, you will get $50,000 deposited into the safe every 48 minutes or every in-game day. Now you can fill your popularity by doing the nightclub missions marked by a blue dot or the blue VIP. Now, if you enter the nightclub in passive mode, you will always get the kick out troublemaker event, which is very easy. You simply walk up to them and you kick them out of the nightclub. You get paid $10,000 and your popularity will increase back to max so long as you haven't let it get too low. So this is absolutely awesome. You will only get that kick out troublemaker event once every 48 minutes. So keep that in mind, do it sparingly and keep that popularity as high as you can. Now, of course, we have to talk about the nightclub basement. Like I mentioned earlier, you're going to need some other businesses in order to run this. Now for this to run as effectively as possible, you are going to need the coke lockup, the bunker, the lab, the CEO cargo warehouse, and counterfeit cash. Weed and document forgery are both secondary things that you don't really need to own for this to run. You're going to make a lot of money with just those initial five. And what you're gonna do is hire five warehouse technicians. Now you get one of these for free with the nightclub. The other four are gonna cost you money. And then you can tell these guys to passively accrue you goods and they will do it over time. Then you can sell whenever you want and you will always be guaranteed a single vehicle sale mission. Now a pro tip for you guys with the nightclub, if you haven't bought one yet, when you're buying it only buy the pounder and the Speedo Custom. Now the Speedo Custom comes with it, but only buy the Pounder, do not buy the Mule. You can use the Pounder for any sale in the game, as long as it's bigger than the Speedo can handle. You can completely skip out on having to use the Mule, and the Mule is a slow piece of shit. So the nightclub is a really good business. The basement will passively make you money. Upstairs will semi-passively make you money. 
And all you're gonna have to do is show up every couple hours and kick out a troublemaker, collect your nightclub money and just leave. It's really that simple. The nightclub is such a good business. And of course still for about three years running now, the number one way to make money in Grand Theft Auto Online as a solo player is the KO Perico heist. Now this takes about an hour to set up for the average player, it can take less, and despite the new nerf, not the last nerf, it is still technically the highest money per hour activity you can do in the game, but there is a big cooldown after completing it, and they've also changed the value of both the primary and secondary targets, and reduced your chances to get the better primary targets, which in turn is going to give you less money. You'll be paid roughly 30 to 35% less than you would have, if you had played this heist a year ago today. They also changed the setup cost from 25 grand to $100,000 as well, meaning that you make less profit overall. Arguably with all of these nerfs, the contract from the agency might actually be a better way to earn money, but I will leave that for you guys to decide. Obviously to get the KO Perico heist, you're gonna need to buy a Kasaka submarine, which is gonna cost you 2.2 mil in the first place, and an agency is only about 2 million. So do the math on that and figure out what you guys want to do, especially if you're starting out in GTA Online. Honestly, I would say probably get the agency before you get the Kasaka. I think it's going to be more worth it for you in the long run. Anyway, guys, that has been it for my picks for the top 10 best ways to make money as a solo player in Grand Theft Auto Online heading into 2024. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you learned something, a like is of course appreciated. If not dislike, subscribe to my channel if you guys are new and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.